to the third annual CSUN uh, Sustainability Day. And uh, we're very happy to have you all here. I uh, apologize for a few uh, t technical difficulties to start off. We have a, a Mac PC PowerPoint uh, problem right now, but uh, it's being resolved. Anyway, so uh, my name is uh, Dr. Helen Cox, and I'm the director of the Institute for Sustainability here on campus. This is an institute that was formed by the provost two years ago, and our mission is to facilitate the greening of the campus and the curriculum and the operations um, through initiatives that are uh, jointly devised through um, operations, people working in operations, people in administration, people in facilities planning, physical plant management, and the faculty and the students on the campus. And um, some of those initiatives so far is we have established a, an organic uh, food garden on the campus, which is getting underway this semester. And uh, uh, something else that we've been working on is improving bicycling programs on campus. We have a big study this semester on how to improve <coughs> bicycle uh, transport both to the campus and around the campus. We've also been working with police and parking services to bring parking compounds to campus so that people who commute to campus on bicycles have somewhere to secure, uh, lock their bicycles for the day if that's their preference rather than leaving them outside buildings. Uh, we're also looking into how to bring a ride sharing program to campus and uh, try to reduce our carbon footprint in terms of our uh, commuting to campus. About 80% of the campus community commutes here in single occupancy vehicles and we're trying to reduce that quantity, encourage people to use public transport, uh, encourage people to bicycle and encourage people to carpool. So this is sort of the beginning of an, an initiative to try to facilitate that. Uh, there are many other projects around the campus that people are working on and uh, one of those also that will uh, certainly involve you as students, is to bring a new um, sustainability curriculum to the campus. So we have, starting next fall, a new minor in sustainability that all undergraduates are eligible to take. And this includes three core courses, one of which is being held actually uh, this semester and will be held again next fall on interdisciplinary perspectives on sustainability and that's a team talk course which involves f uh, faculty from seven different departments around the university. Next semester we're holding the second of our core courses which is best practices in sustainability and in this course um, students will be engaged in active learning where you're going to be working actually on energy facilities, water, um, on the gardening aspect and many other uh, learning about the best practices that people can use in, uh, in making better use of the resources both regionally and of the planet in general. Uh, there are lots of energy initiatives that have been uh, going on for many years jointly between the College of Engineering and Computer Science and our physical plant management including the construction of the solar panels over the, many of the parking lots and a new project that's up on North Campus and when they have uh, state-of-the-art research solar facilities that they have installed up there. We also have the fuel cell on campus and the rainforest and both of those were also joint projects between um, engineering students and faculty and the physical plant management. And what we're trying to do is expand some of those cooperative efforts with faculty students and with the um, people who manage the physical plant on campus. So we're trying to expand that to other colleges besides uh, engineering. Uh, the third of the core courses is going to be a, um, a project uh, uh, in which students are engaged in carrying out a feasibility study or an improvement to some aspect of the campus in terms of a, a greening initiative and that will be held for the first time next fall. Uh, the other courses in the minor are electives and students are um, free to choose from a series of over 30 different electives from all different departments around the university and you can take any three of those electives. Many of you may already have taken um, some of those classes. They're classes that 
have a substantial sustainability component to them. And um, as I said, you can be a, a geographer, a biologist, an engineer, you can be in recreation, tourism, health, many other fields and um, find electives that those faculty have identified that will have a significant um, component of sustainability content in them. So that describes our minor. As I said, um, it's going to come online in uh, next fall. So fall uh, 2011 will be the first time you can actually gain a minor in sustainability. And by that time, all of those core courses will have been held. So we would encourage you to look into that. Anybody interested should go to um, our website, which is www.csun.edu slash sustainability. Okay, so with no more ado, I want to welcome you here. I want to welcome the, the speakers and um, also our moderator for this panel, who's um, uh, Robin Parks, who's from um, the Health and Human Development College, and she will be introducing the speakers. I just want to make sure that you will have your cell phones and I guess we don't need to say pages these days. In the old days, you say pages, but all your, your cell phones off, all those uh, audible devices that are going to start beeping. And um, welcome to our first session. I'm going to have uh, Robin Park stand up and introduce our first speaker. Good morning, everybody. How are you? Awake? I see you're really awake. This morning, I take pleasure in welcoming Alexis, Alexis Lance to be our first speaker. Alexis is a planning and policy director for the Los Angeles County Bike Coalition. She's completed her master's in urban planning at UCLA. Her focus was on transportation. Her interest in transportation stems from a belief that walking, cycling, and mass transit are an integral component for ensuring sustainability communities with stronger local economics. During her time at UCLA, she uh, focused her research and studies on bicycle and pedestrian planning. She's responsible for co-creating the first bicycle and pedestrian planning course for the UCLA Department of Urban Planning. Los Angeles Distinguished Leadership Award for a student planner. And in her role at the Los Angeles County Bicycle Coalition, she's working to expand the amount of cities in, in the county with bike plans constantly looking for new ways to educate city and county staff on the benefits of cycling, bicycle infrastructure, and fostering several local bicycle advocacy, advocacy I can say advocacy, uh, organizations. So let me welcome Alexis. penalize you too much for driving by yourself. Um, but that's great that so many of you guys are able to walk, bike, and take transit to campus. I came from Silver Lake and took the red line to the orange line to the rapid bus and um, actually went pretty fast. Um, so anyways, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, I don't know how many of you guys know about the Los Angeles County Bicycle Coalition, but we are a member-supported nonprofit um, bicycle advocacy organization. Um, we represent the entire county of Los Angeles, although we spend a lot of time just focusing on the city of LA because it's sort of the thousand-pound elephant in the room when it comes to dealing with LA County. Um, and as an advocacy organi organization, we spend a lot of time trying to pressure our electives, the city, Metro, our regional planning agency, which is the Southern California Association of Governments, to do more to provide better infrastructure and access for cyclists. Um, and one of the reasons why we do that is because cycling is not only a really sustainable form of transportation, but it's also a really affordable trans form of transportation. So as gas prices go up, as housing prices get more expensive, one of the best ways for folks to be able to get around is by bicycle, because it's clean and it's cheap. 
Um, so you can see all that information there. So the Los Angeles region, in case you didn't know, we rank number one when it comes to poor air quality. <laughs> it's great, it's great, it's great to be the top. It's great to be the top. So um, bikes are a zero pollution transportation machine. So this is a really important thing that we need to be looking at um, in order to make our air quality a lot cleaner and our quality of life better. Um, we need to sort of get away from the driving by ourselves trips. And there are times, you know, when you got to go by yourself to do whatever you need to do that's not close to home. But there's probably a lot of times in your day when you could walk that one mile um, or ride your bike that three miles or hop on the bus um, or metro. Um, and so as you can see here, 53% of urban vehicle trips are three miles or less. So a lot of the trips we make every day are pretty short. Um, and bikes and walking um, and transit can be used in lieu of uh, driving your car to run errands, do whatever you need to do. Um, and there are, are already almost three million residents in this county of Los Angeles that are either too young or too old to drive. So for those folks, um, bikes, walking, and transit offer a great range of mobility so that you can get out and do things that you don't have to like ask your parents to drive you somewhere. Um, and how many of you guys had to depend on your parents when you were growing up to drive you wherever you wanted to go? All right, a couple of you. <laughs> I grew up in like suburban Virginia and like there were no sidewalks, no bike paths. There was not even a bus line that ran by my house. So if I wanted to go anywhere, I had to have my parents drive me and it sucked. Um, so uh, already over 20% of LA County residents get to work by transit, biking, walking. Um, and I think 12% of all trips, so that's just work right there, but 12% of all trips in our um, county are made by, bike, by biking or walking, which is pretty good. Um, but we need to get that higher, and there's a number of reasons why. But, um, and then within the, just the uh, city of Los Angeles, the amount of people riding bikes to work since 2000 has increased by 48%, which is a lot. So more and more people are starting to bike, and I think one of the reasons is gas prices have gone up, people are trying to figure out better ways of getting around. And also we have, cycling is an equity issue um, from the affordability standpoint, but also we have a lot of folks in the city and county of Los Angeles that can't ever get driver's license because they're not legal. So one of the ways that we can provide for them is by creating um, good bike access and routes so that folks can safely get around the city and not get hit by cars um, or buses in that case. <laughs> but anyways, um, some of the issues that we face are the car culture. Car culture is one of those things I think folks in LA like to focus on. It's like, well, we're different. We have car culture. Uh, everywhere in America, Europe, everybody's got car culture. Um, it's easy. It's easy to go outside your house and get in your car and do something. Trying to do better takes effort, and people don't like to work that hard. We're all lazy. <laughs> so um, there's a lot of education and things that need to go on to sort of get people to understand why bicycle and pedestrian, and I didn't write it on there, but transit, is really important and why we need to provide better in a infrastructure and accommodation um, for folks that want to walk or bike or take transit. Um, and so also, and I think some folks are gonna talk about this so I won't harp on it, but um, there's a lack of knowledge among all of us, whether you're walking, biking, driving in your car, about how to share the road. And that's a really big issue that we all need to do better about. Um, and then one of the other issues we face, which is a big one, is the lack of political and bureaucratic support and leadership. Um, there is change happening. It's happening slowly. We have some great things going on. How many of you guys know um, that Mayor Villaraigosa is like now hopped up on bikes? All right. Okay. So does anyone know why he's kind of hopped up on bikes right now? He got hit by a truck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He didn't actually get hit, but a taxi pulled out in front of him and he had to react and he uh, fell off his bike and hurt himself. And now he's totally all about bikes. So, um, uh, or at least better about bicycle infrastructure. So sometimes it takes falling off your bike to realize uh, how much uh, we need to make the system better. And how many of you guys know who your um, council member is for the uh, uh, for where the school is? Do you guys know who your council member is? Can anyone shout out who the council member is? All right. Um, does Greg Smith like alternative transportation? <laughs> no. No. He's a really bad person uh, when it comes to bicycle and pedestrian and even transit investment. Um, so how many of you guys are registered to vote? All right, that's good. Um, Greg Smith is going to be 